All right. Enough of me. Joining us now, we are very uh, grateful. Welcoming back to the show, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem. Uh, Governor, welcome. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you. Thanks for doing this. Um, last yeah. night, big historic win uh, for Mr. Trump, as you know, and he's got a great comeback going. I just want to play for you uh, what he said at Mar-a-Lago about success and unity uh, around the whole country. Take a listen to this, and then we'll get your comments. Okay. A tragic thing happened during the election. It was a tragedy because you wouldn't have think of it. All of the problems that you have today, I don't think you would have had any of them. You'd only have success. And that's what's ultimately going to unify this country and unify this party. We have a great Republican Party with tremendous talent. And we want to have unity. And we're going to have unity. And it's going to happen very quickly. And I have been saying lately, Success will bring unity to our country. All right, so, Governor, no, that, all right, how do you read that? That's, you know, this is unique to politics. People don't think in those terms. They think of Republicans and Democrats and independents. He is saying his policies will succeed, and that will bring unity. How do you read that, Governor? I loved it. I loved it, Larry, when he said that. That was so perfect, because it's so true. Uh, we've seen that play out in different parts of the country the last several years. The states that had the right leadership, their families there have been more successful and they're happier. If you look at my little state of South Dakota, we uh, pursued very conservative policies. People are making 30% more money than they've made before. Uh, they're having more babies than they've ever had before. Their businesses are more successful. Their taxes are lower. We've got more money in reserves. We've got a AAA credit rating. Our pension plan is fully funded. We've got all kinds of businesses moving in. And our mental health challenges are going down. Suicides are going down. And our drug overdoses are going down. So President Trump knows that his policies bring success. And when you do that, People are happy and they get along and they enjoy each other. And that is exactly what we're seeing here. I can't wait to see it on a national scale. Uh, you know, he went on to uh, last night in the Mar-a-Lago speech. I think it was an underrated speech because if you actually read the speech, it was really quite good. I watched it a second time uh, when I got home. But he's putting together this populist coalition. Newt Gingrich was writing about it. I've written about it. You know, working class folks be they white, black, brown, Asian, whatever, doesn't matter. Working class folks, you know, Governor, they prefer pay increases after inflation. Mm -hmm. Under Biden, they've had a pay cut. Uh, we have some sound about what I think is this populist coalition Mr. Trump is putting together. Please take a listen. They wanted to get together African American, Asian American, Hispanic American, women, men, people with diplomas from the best schools in the world and people that didn't graduate from high school. Every single group was doing better than ever before. And it was a beautiful thing. Our country was coming together. Again, you know, this is not your grandfather's Republican Party. And it's a brand new Trump populist party. And I think you're very much part of this movement, ma'am. But I just wondered what you thought of that. Right across the board. Doesn't matter. They're working folks and they want pay increases. I remember when he first ran for president. I was driving down the interstate, driving on a road trip with a truck and trailer with my daughter, and every trucker I saw had a Make America Great hat on again, and I thought, what is happening? This is back in 2016. And what was happening was that President Trump broke politics. Mm. He broke politics because he didn't care what party you were in. He was just going to fight for you, for the people that get up every day and go and work and have a job and take care of their families and make good decisions and still love America. And that, and he's never changed once. He hasn't changed a single thing. He's continued to fight for everybody. And what I love about his poll numbers is that people are recognizing just how devastating and socialist the Democrat Party is and how badly they need President Trump back in the White House. And if you add the economic stuff to the border, you know, no one will be tougher on the border than Donald Trump. No oh. one. Uh, and, of course, other issues. There's the culture war, and we need to improve our image and our standing overseas. I mean, how do you see this campaign playing out? How do you see the issues playing out? I'm sure you're going to be campaigning for him. You've been a supporter. What are going to the top issues be? And what's Joe Biden, what do you think Joe Biden, when he shows up copacetically, what's he going to say about it? I don't think he knows what he's going to say about it. I think that... Uh, this is what I, how I explained it to somebody last night. I said, you know, you can only light a person on fire so many times until they don't feel it anymore. 
They just do what's right. Um, and that's where he is. I think President Trump is at the point where they have literally thrown every single arrow dart at him that they possibly could, and he's just going to keep doing what's right. So they're going to try to use divisive topics against him. I don't think that they're going to be able to be successful on the economy. They're not going to be successful on families' budgets, on gasoline or, or, gro or grocery prices, because every family knows that Joe Biden has wiped out their bank accounts and maxed out their credit cards. Uh, they're going to try to do it on social issues, and Republicans are going to have to be smart and recognize that the people should be making these decisions and that these people, that we are a country built on freedom and on uh, a standard that allows people to have a say in what their government is and that the people making the decisions closest to those folks and those families where they live make the best decisions. I've never seen a solution come out of the federal government that actually made something better. So if you walk it look and look at who's been leading the last several years, it's governors, it's mm. states. Mm. And uh, on a lot of those issues, they've been making the best decisions. So President Trump should continue to point to states where there was good leaders that made tough decisions and their people are thriving. Governor Nome, if uh, President Trump asks you, are you open to a vice presidential nomination? I told him I want him to win. He needs to win. So I will do anything he needs me to do to help him win because it's that important to our country. So if he wants me to go out there and knock on doors and, you know, put yard signs in, I'll do that too. So whatever it takes, because it's that important that his policies get back in place and that a guy who loves this country is back in the White House who fights for us every day. But you would come to Washington as his vice president. It's not my favorite place, Larry. You know that. But um, <laughs> yes. So, yes, I, I go there once in a while, and I would certainly help him. All right, so I'll take that as a yes. Final thing, Governor Nome, appreciate your time, as always. I know in uh, South Dakota you've got a bill, I think it's a new bill, combating anti-Semitism or reaffirming old bills. Could you just tell us a little bit about that, because it's such an important issue? Well, this is a bill that defines what anti-Semitism is, and it has examples that we put in statute that will be used as model legislation in every other state to make sure we're defining what a hate crime is and that we can prosecute those who engage in it. It really is the strongest language in this country to push back on some of what we've seen for hatred being spread across this country since the October 7th attacks. So uh, I was devastated to see some folks in this country be uneducated and some maybe purposefully stand with pro-Hamas and uh, attack our allies Israel and our brothers and sisters in the Jewish community. So this bill we signed into law today in the rotunda of our capital. We had hundreds and hundreds of people there. Mm. It was amazing to see the unity and the support. We have one of the smallest Jewish communities in the entire country. Um, but we dearly love them and stand with our allies and are proud to sign this bill that I believe many, many, many other states are going to use because it gives them strong language that we can win in court and prosecute those who engage in hate crimes. Uh, congratulations on that. We appreciate it. Governor Christy Nome, thank you ever so much. Good to see you. You bet. Good to see you too, Larry. Have All a great right. day. You